Quiz, are you turned up? You are now listening to the Cap Session. This is a Cap Session Network production. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Smooth, Smooth Black. Suave Negrito, Jefe Hilton, King Black, the heartbroken people healing himself, and let's not forget Manifestation God. Yo, this is Larry Hilton, and this is The Couch Session. Fucking up already. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Our Heart, Overcast, Anchor, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, and SoundCloud. If you want to donate, keep listening to the show. Switch apps, go to Cash App, type in a dollar sign, the couch session. Anything and everything is appreciated. I appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you for all the first time listeners, all the last time listeners. And today is a special show. This is not only just the couch session, but we collabing with something very special, with someone very special. And if I'm gonna let her go ahead and introduce herself, talk to him. What up? It's your girl Shan. She be potting. She be potting dot com. She gets it. Cozy Room Podcast, the Love Page Beyond Bid Podcast, Loud Mouth Serial, The Real Relationship Report. It's your girl that be busy on the mic. It's Shan. What's good? Shan, what's good? I love it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I knew you had your own. You know, I was like, yo, I gotta let her get her intro off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um. Let's let's uh like I start off every every um show is with a, a mental health check. But first, before we get into this <sighs> elaborate <laughs> <laughs> this elaborate podcast, we gonna uh we gonna play some music. You know this is I don't know Shannon if you know or not, but uh the Couch Session is the the best podcast for the culture. It's a it's a podcast where you know we play nothing but the dopest local music, and um, we're gonna play some local music. If I could find his email, I should have deleted it. Shan, did I delete it? I hope not. I hope not either. So we're gonna go to the trash real quick, just in case. I'm gonna type in his name. Where he at? I'm very organized with my e- emails. I just be deleting shit. Then I gotta get people to resend it to How me. What you got? You said what? How many unread emails you got? I don't even have a lot right now. This I'm saying. It's, What's the number? It's not a lot. It's eight. It's eight. Oh, okay. okay. It's it's only eight. It's only oh. eight. Hold on. I don't know why I can't find it though. That's what I'm saying. You said what? The name in the search, it'll pop up. Unless I delete it. It shouldn't be deleted from the trash can. You ain't sorry? I just started doing that shit, Shane. I'm not your, your most tech savvy person. I'll be fucking up, yo. We gonna find it though. But Shan, you know what I'm saying? You got anything to, uh, anything else to plug the people in while we looking for this music? What can I plug the people on? If you are a podcaster or thinking about podcasting, I got some good books for you on Lulu.com. You can check out the podcast journal. You can check out the podcast questions. And if you have a podcast, you recorded the podcast, you put out episodes. That's only 20% of it. The rest of it is actually marketing your podcast and pushing it to your people. So I have a book that really self-based. You put in the work, it'll work for you. Whether it's TikTok, Twitter, um, IG, or your own merch page. If you get marketing, the podcast one-on-one on on Lulu.com, I got you. And you'll be on the right track to do what you need to do so i do podcasts but i also find ways to help other people in podcasting so that's what i do you know what i'm saying so y'all can check that out i love it i love it i love it 
You um you actually have I can't find it. We won't have to do it without the local podcast, so I'll plug it in. So but yeah, I guess we're gonna get straight into it, Shane. That's the universe saying, nah, go ahead get this get this little monk <laughs> get this monkey off your back. Get the monkey off your back. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it like that. Um but yeah, shout out to Jay Santana anyways. You know what I'm saying? Great artist out of Chester, Pennsylvania. I played his music on the last podcast. Amazing artist. Up and coming. He gonna you be He's gonna be something big. What'd you say? I said you always got good music on here. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. But um I also wanna start by saying that last podcast, I made myself sound like a straight up bum. And I was Why do you think that? I don't think that. Oh, I think I'm, I'm like, yo, I was just listening, it's like Yo, you got a lot going for yourself right now. You got a you lot. Do. Like you just, you're really coming up out of the the mud. Like, and so sometimes you can be your worst critic. You could be your worst cheerleader on your progress because you just feel like Boy, so you turned up. what you, where you at? You should have been already. Like you want somebody else to clock, but you always have to remind yourself that. You are the clock, like you're not on nobody else's time frame. So, don't doubt. You're right. You're right. I do need to give myself more credit than I do. And uh, shit, my cousin actually told me a week ago. She was like, "Mac, you know you don't own out of my mom's side." She said, "You know you don't only entrepreneur." I was like, "Damn, damn, damn. made me feel a little special." Are you doing something right You know what I'm saying Work for yourself Ain't nobody doing that It's hard It's hard to um, Have the mental capacity To get out of Somebody else's idea Of what you should be doing Yes do for So I don't think Entrepreneurship is for everybody But if you have the mentality To Be your own pusher mm-hmm. It's possible I also uh, <laughs> had older parents, so yeah, yeah. they they just like get a job, something stable, and keep it pushing. Because at the time, it was you need a good job to have a good life. Yeah. Now it's like that job don't give a fuck, and everybody knows it. So what you gonna do just in case that job is like we don't need it? Yeah. <clears throat> um. So Shan, I uh. One, I'm gonna let the people know. I'm grateful to have connected with you, Shan. I'm, I'm glad you hit me up uh, the, the, when you first listened to the podcast. I was like, "Well, who's this?" Because I, I'm like, it's "Good to have another podcaster, <laughs> friend, listener, supporter that listens to the show." I appreciate you, Shan, for real, for real. Genuinely, I appreciate you. you. You're welcome. I appreciate you too because. Um, I do podcasts, but I'm also a a very spontaneous podcast listener. And um, I found out about you through Troy, um, listening to his podcast. And I'm just like, who is this dude? And I <laughs> like the conversation. So I had text Troy because I always like hit him up like after his episodes to give him like feedback mm-hmm. even if he doesn't and I was like who you was um, recording with and he told me and I didn't know that you had your own podcast and then I started that same day I started listening to your podcast and I'm the type of person that if I'm intrigued by a person I'm all up in your shit without you knowing anything about me so I was like it's either he gonna be like who is this bitch bothering me or he gonna be like open to it so you was really open to um conversations and i just deep dive in conversations with you um as if like we knew each other already um just to set the tone like that's just that's just who i am if if anybody be like oh yeah i know sean tall i've been like this since the second grade i'm all up in your space (laughs) um and i'm always going to give you the most honest thoughts that i have and 
Real niggas respect it. And which is why I'm ha- I had to have you on this session <laughs> right here. And with that that second to the last sentence, you always gonna keep it real. It was just, which is why I have you on this last one right now because you know, Shan. If you don't know, because you've only known me for a, a cup, less than a month, maybe. But if you don't know, I, I'm a very self-reflecting guy. I was, I'm, I feel like that uh, comes from being an only child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not having, only having a handful of friends. I spent a lot of time in my room with them four walls, just thinking. Whether it be thinking on the game, thinking, listening to music. Just thinking, drawing, thinking, writing. Just had a lot of time to think. And I noticed that uh, self-reflection is everything. And self-reflection kind of goes hand in hand with accountability. And I would like to, I would like to think that I'm a very accountable person when it comes to myself. I may not. I may not remind everybody else that hey, you should you shouldn't do that or you should do this. Or, you know what I'm saying? I'll be worried about myself. But because yeah. you keep you know, I, I was reflecting. I had, like I said to bring it back. I, I wanted you on this show because I wanted to make sure I wasn't tripping. Okay. And you you've been keeping it real with me, and so yeah. far it seemed like we've been on the same page. Mm-hmm. So you know, I spoke a little bit on the last episode about uh, niggas close to me not uh, not knowing how to talk to motherfuckers, like yeah, just uh, human relations, you know, uh, just being able to t- t- knowing what to say, what not to say, right time, wrong time, for everything. Mm-hmm. Timing is everything, even though some may feel like time is not real. Timing is everything at the same time, and. Yeah. Uh, Oh, Shannon's your mental health, okay? We didn't mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Baby. That was it. Like, yeah, it's your um, mental health, okay? My mental health is cool. Well, how you see, all I had to look at the notes, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm seeing the notes, but I, I'm, I'm also peeping the vibe. So, but so nah. my mental Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I feel good. I feel. I feel like a change is on its way and I'm just observing and I'm taking my time and I'm making sure I'm dotting my I's and crossing my T's. Um, be going into the last month of the year and uh, if you haven't been on your shit, I feel like December is either going to show you that you've been on your shit or you haven't been on your shit. And you're going to have to carry out everything you've been talking about this year. And you're going to have to show up. Um, So with that being said, I'm just making sure I'm showing up for myself mentally and physically. Um, As a mom, I've been reflecting on, okay, when the girls are this age, I'm going to be this age. How do I want to feel? And I think a lot of times when you in your thirties, people feel like, oh, by this age, I'ma do this and get healthier. And I'm just like, no, I don't wanna do no by this age, I wanna be healthy, I wanna do it now. So I just been, um, I don't wanna call it a diet because it's not a diet. I'm not, I don't have a goal for this. I just wanna feel good and I want, my body to be feeling how my mental feels so you know not eating after six i'm doing that um that is the hardest thing it's hard as shit you like you really have to make yourself go to sleep or stay busy to not snack and so um i'm doing that i'm up in my water i'm taking a lot of like um bitter melon and uh Husk, organic pills, uh, oregano, putting chlorophyll in my water. Just being very accountable. 
<laughs> for Facts. my shit and being like, you don't feel good because you've been eating like shit. Or you feel great because you've been limiting a lot of bullshit. And um, what's so crazy is sometimes when you have a lot of money out the blue, you start mm-hmm. feeling like, I should be able to go out and do this and do that. And yeah. a lot of things you feel like you should be able to do is not healthy. And so I feel like October going into November, I was lacking on that and going out more and doing stuff with the girls. So now I'm just like, going out, real- going out more real- and dressing less. Huh? Going out, like Drake said, going out more and dressing less. I mean, I wasn't going out more because, you know, I'm antisocial, but I would say, like, money wasn't an object. And when money's not an object, I know oh, that's we right. Can eat here, we can go eat here, we can have this. You know, I, I know I went out yesterday, I'm going to eat out today, and yeah. now I'm just like, sis. Your knees have knees. Your thighs have thighs. Like, what we about to do? And so I'm just like, nah. Let me reel it in now. And nah, so I feel you. Like, I feel you. Yeah. Congrats to you. You can go ham in that gym. I pee. Thank you. Thank you. I have. I be. I slack since Thanksgiving. Um, I've only went once, <clears throat> so I've skipped yeah. skipped a couple of days. But I'm getting back into this. Um. I'm getting, well, I'm getting, I'm starting a schedule for my, for my life now. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I told you earlier today, I tell the, the rest of the listeners, cause I'll be, be at work by the time they listen to this. But I, um, I start the barbershop tomorrow. Yeah, I know you happy about that. Hell yeah, it is Wednesday, 9.50. So Thursday, I'll be in the barbershop. It's my first day. <coughs> so I'm excited. I'm excited. Excuse the coughing. Y'all know what time it is. I lit the I lit the blizzy, but um, <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, I got. I, I used to be almost 400 pounds. I was two three seventy. Then I dropped down to two sixty, and then I moved, and then I got to back to three ten, and I told myself I would never get back in the threes again. So now I've been in the gym. I'm at two ninety one. So I'm trying to get back to 260 where I was at my my the lowest. Um, yeah. And then we going for an ultimate goal. I think we going for like 222 30. 222 30. Yeah, I want to slim down and then I might want like bulk up. Like I want to slim down first, but I want to mm-hmm. bulk up. Like and I was thinking, I was like, Yo, if I lose too much weight right? and I got flabby skin. I'm getting surgery, y'all. I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting surgery. Do do what you're comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to get my, sexy. My thing with people is don't do something drastic and then the rest of your body can't keep up. And oh, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot more women doing that than men. Yes. And I'm just like it's obvious you got work done because this don't match, this don't match, this don't match. And my whole thing is like, I know the older you get, running is not good on your knees. Um, so I try to walk, jog for the most part. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like walking and just like increasing it, it works out your whole body. And I feel like if you do that, and you tame your eating habits and you just increase your water intake your fat that's not healthy fat will fall off so fast mm-hmm. off a little shit that by the time you get down to a weight where you just like okay now I want to bulk up it'll be a lot easier and it's just a little thing that we gotta tweak but there's a lot of people that's like oh I can't drink water all the time it's nasty if you get to a point where you feel like water is nasty, that's how much you need it because yeah. <laughs> society for your taste buds to think that water is nasty when it's really not. If you think water is nasty, you're just an unhealthy motherfucker. Listen, that should be crazy when I hear people say that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I 
I heard you had a a new revelation of the day. Yeah. My new revelation is um <sighs> Sometimes a loss is not a loss. You gain what you was carrying that wasn't ha- healthy. And I say that to be things, people, or just stale thoughts that's not really helping you progress. And I think a lot of people have a bad habit of holding on to things because I've had it for this long. Or, but I always um, carry this. Well, if you carry that shit and it's not helping you progress in the way you want to progress, then... If somebody or somebody brings it to your attention, but well, why are you not doing this no more? Because where I'm headed, I'm carrying a pointless baggage. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you explain that to people, they either gonna respect it or they're not gonna respect it. And they gonna think, oh, you know, they must have did something that was fucked up that rubbed you the wrong way. Sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes it's just like less is more. And so it's okay. I'm at the point where I'm just like, man, I don't have no hope for this. This is not going to improve. This has been always what it is. And I don't want to pour any more time into it. So it's not a loss. I'm, I don't feel like I'm losing anything. I just feel like, let me get out your way so you can do what the fuck you want to do that has nothing to do with me. And um, I've been doing that a lot. And so the older I get, it's kind of like the less people or shit I'm in that I really don't want to be in anyway, I'm not losing out on anything. I don't feel like I'm missing an action or I have FOMO, what people call it. I don't have that shit. I think a lot of people, so basically dropping dead weight. Yeah. I think people, a lot of people are scared to drop people or things around them that aren't uh, benefiting them. Like, you know, my boy Zay. <clears throat> you don't know him, but you've heard him on a podcast. Yeah. Um, he <laughs> I tell him all the time. I said it on the podcast. Why are you with this girl? And I'm like, she doesn't benefit you. And he'll say little stuff like, oh, she gives me gas money sometimes. And this is little shit. It's like, bro, that shit don't matter, bro. But um, I will give her the benefit of the doubt. He says that she's changing. I will say that for the listeners and, and him that's going to listen to this. But um, <laughs> but I mean, hey, I, I feel like you get to a point, you get to an age, you get, I'm 31. I don't know how old you are. I'm 31. I'm at 31. And it's my bad. Y'all got the window open. But, um, you get to 31 it's like you know what I ain't got time for none of that shit I like no tolerance goodbye goodbye bye bye like in and out and it's hard to talk to someone who's holding on to some shit they need to let go because sometimes when when you tell somebody like you don't have no tolerance for that they see it as oh well you're not you're not being forgiving or you're you're not being kind or no I've just I've been I've been through enough exactly <laughs> and my and this is why I say if if I if my favorite cousin was getting like beat full pulp every day by the person she with I can't tell her when she had had when she had enough you know what I'm saying I can't tell my best friend when they had enough of a shitty situation. They got to get to a point where they're just like, I have reached my threshold. And so when it comes to people, the older I get also, I'm going to listen. But I'm not going to speak on what my advice is unless you ask me. And when you ask me my advice... When you invite me to have my own opinion on your shit, then you can't get mad at me for what my thoughts are. And a lot of people aren't ready to respect someone else's thoughts 
on their shit after they invited them to the table. And that shit is so crazy to me. So mm. you good with this podcast shit. Like that, that, that was a great that was a great segue. That was a, that was a great segue. Um <clears throat> Going back to what I was almost divulged earlier, the little appetizer, knowing, learning, and being able to communicate, speak with someone. Wow. Um, how we start this, Sam? Okay, let's first start with the fact that in order to know and be open to learning how to speak to someone you have to have a common respect <coughs> for someone mm. because if you don't have the respect to listen on what you need to know in order to carry out a conversation with somebody is not going to get to the result y'all thinking is going to happen but then oh Go ahead, go ahead. If you're not open to learning how to talk to me, I'm the type of person where don't say shit to me because I'm going to punch you in your shit. You have to learn how to talk to people in order to talk to people. And some people will let you talk to them any type of way. And some people hold shit in that they need to share at a certain time frame before following through. Because when you follow through on something, but you have something to say, but you don't open your mouth to say it, it gives off a understanding of your in agreement with whatever's about to happen. And this is why I say it's very important for people to speak up at a what? A certain time. Mm -hmm. And to speak up in a certain way for things to flow without anybody having a difference in opinion or what should have happened or how you should have did it based on my thinking that I did not share with you which sounds fucking insane how are you you giving out you divulging everything huh? yeah, I'm, not, I'm saying in general because I need people to understand where I'm coming from and why I say what I say how are you deciding how something should have resulted without sharing your thoughts along the process and that's all I wanted to say but continue <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have a how you like you said how you met me um, we have a mutual friend I keep it real yes. I keep it real on a goddamn cow session and I drop names. Shout out to Joe Budden and, and Charlemagne the God for being my inspirations for calling niggas out on the mic. Mm. <laughs> but it's not gonna be a bad call out. You know what I'm saying? This nigga in the Toroy. This nigga Toroy. <clears throat> I wanna say that because I thought he was I ain't gonna say I thought. Because you but you said something earlier. He said some out of pocket shit. He says some out of pocket shit. And I'm only, you know what I'm saying? I'm only, not only, but you know, it's a couch session. It's my therapeutic mm -hmm. time for us to come together and speak our hearts and minds. Yada, yada. You know the rest, y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he said something on his podcast, but he was very indirect and he's very wrong. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I like receipts. I like receipts. I like, I like hard facts. I, I, I like to, I'm innocent till proven guilty. And, um, he just said some out of pocket shit that I want to address, and uh, I think it's good content. <laughs> okay. But uh, I guess I would have to. It started with. It started with a conversation we never should have been having. And that's, you and. Yes, me and Teroy. And. The, the conversation was who fuck with who fuck with bad bitches, and which is a very common discussion men have that most men should not be having. Okay, agree. <laughs> because it can get 
to where we're at right now. Okay. And um <laughs> and I forgot what was said, but I said he said something and I was like, bro, you don't think before you speak. <clears throat> and he went into how Man, you always, you can tell that he felt some type of way that I said that. Because his response was, you always say, I don't think before I speak. You don't be thinking before you speak and you be making dumb decisions. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, where that, where that come from? You were holding this on this shelf. Thank you. You, you, yeah, you, you've been thinking about this for a while. So, um, and I guess I, so the, so the listeners, can uh have a full i'm about to read the messages word by word all right i'm a good reader so it ain't gonna take long <clears throat> i said stupid decisions how and i don't be lying bro hold on did i see yeah i don't know what's, what was before that um i said stupid decisions how let me run that beat back real quick my bad y'all my bad there we go i say shit because that's what it is you don't think before you speak all the time, and I and you swear you do. What stupid decisions I make, nigga? I, I mind my fucking business and I stay to myself. That's what I'm saying. You always saying some out of pocket shit. So now I want to know what you think you know. And I never say shit because that's how you are. You think the shit you saying is fine, but you, it really be out of pocket. So he says he goes into this. He starts divulging all this shit that I'm like, where does it, where is this coming from, Shan? Because he, again, he never, I didn't, this is the first time me hearing about it. He said, yeah. he said, nigga, you went to see a girl instead of catching up on your phone bill. That's irresponsible. Pussy gonna be there, take care of your responsibilities like you've been hanging on by a thread with your phone bill for how long? That should have went to your phone bill. Like you got a tattoo knowing you didn't know how you was going to pay your phone bill or rent. Counting your pockets? No. Cause I said he was counting my pockets. Um, what did I say? Did I say? Yeah, I said he was. Wait, before you go forward. Uh huh. What is the, why is the focus on the phone bill at this point? Why is the focus on the phone bill at this point? I don't know, Shan. Okay. I couldn't answer that for you. I couldn't. I couldn't answer that because he never discussed that he had an issue with my phone bill, like he was my fucking parent. Okay. All right. Next question: <clears throat> Was anything given to you by Troy at this point? Yes. So. Okay. Months. So, <clears throat> so all right for all the listeners. Months ago. Months ago, months ago, months ago, probably like, and I could have paid him back by now, but he said, don't worry about it, just get it to me when you, when you can, all at one time, I said, for sure, I borrowed, it was like, you know, 50 there, then like 100, and then, um, I was down, I was down and out, I was, I was out bad, um, at one point, while, while I was in school, dropping podcasts, yeah, was, I, I stayed, uh, it was a couple nights, I had to stay in the car for like a week and a half. I stayed in the car trying to figure out what the fuck the, the next fucking move was gonna be. Like ain't nobody, ain't nobody know. Like buying, buying little outlets. So I in the summertime buying little outlets, car, uh, battery outlets for my uh, car so I could have my fan in there. Like waking up every twenty minutes because the car cut off and then I start getting hot, start it up again. Praying to God that my battery ain't dead by the end of the fucking uh, by the morning time. Like shit, to we don't know about. We we gonna get there though. Um, let me run this beat back. Uh, I don't know why he's yo. We, yes, I borrowed. I capped myself off at two hundred. I was down in bed and I needed some money and um, oops, let me run that. and. I borrowed um, 200 <clears throat> and most of it was because I was trying to get a job, but people had to call me, um, but my phone, because everybody that listens knows I got arrested last year, and that fucked me up, 
slow me down. I couldn't get a job at fucking uh, goddamn cookout or uh, McDonald's without them taking goddamn forever to run a background check. Like, yo, I'm, I'm fucking dropping fries and making McChickens. Selling chicken nuggets to motherfuckers at 12 o'clock at night. Like, what the fuck? Why I gotta have a clean record to do this shit? But, um, I got two pending charges. And, um, so I need to keep my phone on. Note, note that I'm still out here hustling. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I made myself sound like a fucking bum on the last one. But I'm still out here hustling. Still out here, like, making making clothes. You know what I'm saying? People still in my inbox asking for clothes. I start my barbershop. I start a career. A career, Sam. I have, I'm a, I have a career now. You know what I'm saying? I start my career to, <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but I got a little. I got a little. I didn't even think to. Uh, I got a little wallet on my on my my podcast. But you know, what I'm saying? I don't want to touch that. You know, what I'm saying I ain't Joe Budden or nothing like that. They got you know they just dipping that motherfucking like yo. We gonna use the the couch session credit card today. I ain't got it like that. I'm still I'm still out here hustling. I'm doing my thing. I just. Money, when you're an entrepreneur, money be up and down. Right. Um, some shit, some shit he. Well, what is, what is you and Toroy's relationship, um, as far as like, what is my, to, Toroy is my dog. Toroy is my no. nigga. As far as like, money wise, you would, you have a history with Toroy where <laughs> if, if you borrowed anything, you got him. Back. Yes, yes. Back. My my credit okay. my credit to Roy can never say that my credit ain't good with him. I need some okay. if it's the tenth and I'm like, yo, Toroy, let me get uh twenty dollars to the uh the twelfth. I'm like, boom, I'm hitting that back to him on the eleventh. Definitely by the twelfth. Like that, that's what I wanna establish. Credit always good with Toroy. Okay. All right. C- credit credit always good with Toroy. Always okay. good. So so fast forward. <laughs> so, back in the situation, right? We back in the situation of him bringing up what he would have so did I, with the money for the phone bill. I told him, hold on, let's finish. Let's finish this last little part. This oh. well, let's finish these text messages. So I asked, and we can break them down piece by piece if you want to. Um, okay. So he, asked, I was like, yo, you count my pockets? Like that's crazy. You count my pockets? And um, because, like I was saying, um, he he wasn't. He was like, he said, bruh. I'm good. I never. He said that he was working his job. He was he was good on money. He said, "Hey, bro, just pay me back when you can." Um, I I, I believe I and I asked him, "Hey, do you want it in payment?" You know what I'm saying? Twenty here, fifty there, hundred there, thirty there, ten there. He's like, nah, just get it to me whenever you can. It's no rush. I said, "Bet was in school. School fly by like that, especially when you full time." I knew once I graduated school, I'm getting right to a shop. What am I doing right after three weeks after being out of school, Shan? Getting into a shop. My plan is to pay the nigga back. Hey, here go that 200. Here go the 250. If it's really good, here go 300 or whatever, bro. Just because I'm, because I fuck with you. Because I love you. You know what I'm saying? You looked out. You know what I'm saying? Now it's my time to give back because I'm speaking in my life. Money not about to be an option now. So, but it never got there. Because, oh, yeah, so I, I didn't get there. You know, I'll start my job tomorrow. I was probably be able to pay him back tomorrow. Um, but going back to the, the text messages, I don't know why he's counting my pockets, but he said, counting your pockets, no, you're caught up. Uh, I told him I was caught. Why is these messages not in order? Let's hold on, because I'm going to the, the screenshots I had sent you. Let's go to the actual. God damn, God damn. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So. <laughs> This not even uh, to run it back, saying this not even where the insult started. I said I didn't feel like talking to him at the time, so I was like at work right now. Text me, cause he kept calling. He's like I told him he was trying to play me, and he said play you, uh, play you how? Um, you told me plenty of times. Uh, he said something about my insecurities. This is what he said. Oh, 
my thing is like why are we bringing up insecurity that's what i'm so saying much? it's a lot of shit that that was said he said something like, at the end of a message he was like yeah but your insecurities be fucking you up and i was like yo you be trying to play me like what is my insecurities i did do with shit I was like, I'm at work right now. Text me, nigga. He was like, play you. No, you told me plenty of times. Women have told you that. I said, Murray. That's it. Everybody knows Murray's my ex. He said, and Deja. He said, and Deja. Some girl I was talking to for a couple of months. Um, I said, wrong. Never said that. He said, we did a podcast together. And, and she said that you get in your own way sometimes. How would Deja know? I, I mean, be, we were in a, in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like she don't know me to know nothing about my insecurities. So now I'm 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 bothered. I'm aggravated, and I keep if I know you, know you. I'm gonna keep it real with you. What I think is real, and I said you sound stupid, bro. Just stop. Now, I know that could have been a little offensive. Paul. Mm-hmm. Any regular person would say you sound stupid. Stupid, or you're being disrespectful at that point because I feel like you were in a position in that text thread. Like, where the fuck are these thoughts coming from? Because going through the text, it looks like it was snowballing into this is in from Toroyo's kind of like this is where I'm just gonna lay out all my thoughts about what I think about you, what yes. you're doing. And it's and and so anybody in your position would be like, where the fuck is all of this coming from? What did I? Whose feet did I just step on to make you just throw all these shots and thoughts at me with someone I feel like I know so well? And why we ha had a discussion on people that know you really well, and then just out the blue get really defensive. Is because they feel some pressure coming from somewhere, whether it's them holding in something. And I share with you an experience I had with a friend of mine where she asked me to be her accountability person. And I agreed and I was holding her accountable. And when I text her as a reminder, that morning when we were supposed to have a conversation about what she asked me to help her with she got really defensive and sort of did that type of shit where she was just like spewing thoughts off topic yeah. that were negative about something you already congratulated on so it hit me like damn you had some real thoughts about something about something I did and you never shared it Mm -hmm. And when it's somebody that you would really be close to Or somebody you feel like you should know very well And they hold something back like that It catch you off guard So I don't feel like And it's not that it even caught me off guard I just Taroy always says Some off the wall shit And I just be like You know what that's just how he is You know what I'm saying Like, And I, and I know again Because he said We'll get to it He said I don't take accountability And that bothers me but accountability is knowing, which I know, is that I take things personal sometimes, all the time. Like growing up, I've been to this day, like I've had good my, my lodge brothers, my good friends be like, Larry, you take shit too personal. It's like stop yeah. taking stop taking motherfuckers personal. You know, like maybe they going through something. You know what I'm saying? But I still feel like that um you should know better when you say you somebody friend. Quick, sorry, you turned up. I feel like you should know better when you say somebody friend. Um to learn how they how they like to be spoken to or how to go about certain discussions. And I think <clears throat> that's what brings me to the respect factor. Your bottom line foundation with somebody that you cool with, you're close to and you know for a long time and you call your friend no matter if you're upset angry um, confused or you feel slighted you should always maintain a level of respect and I feel like he didn't have that, that was, respect I feel like he didn't have it in that text I felt like it was bad timing but at the same time you're saying um 
you know, you already saying something out of pocket. Like, I'm, sometimes, I'm fed up at this moment. Right, and I get that, but sometimes when people don't have certain life experiences, let's uh, they yeah, don't, hold on. We not wait, there yet. We not there yet. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, when people don't have certain life experiences, and when you don't live a gangsta ass life like I do, wait, and that's and that's now play it. Living a certain lifestyle and being around certain personalities, you have to learn how to check yourself quicker than someone else. And so sometimes, mm. <laughs> say that sometimes again. Say that again. You have to learn how to check yourself quicker than you would with someone else. Like, we all have our auntie that don't have to put her hands on you. She just look at you a certain way as a kid and you just straight the fuck up. For sure. And we have that parent or, you know, that other person that try to check you. And you just like, oh, you ain't gonna do shit. And you still just, you know, chill and do your own thing. It's just, it works the same way. Sometimes somebody gets so comfortable around you being a certain way that they feel like they can talk to you anyway gotcha. and when you do that you end up rubbing someone the wrong way and whatever you feel like is quote unquote accountability in your eyes or or criticism it's never going to come across like that because it's just seen as disrespect because that is not how you talk to me so, so it's a waste of time. And I feel like that's what it was. So going back to the text, I say you sound stupid, bro. Just stop. Hoping that he just gonna stop. <laughs> 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 and he says, he says, you always say I sound stupid or say stupid shit, but you be making stupid ass decisions. Like chill out. I said, oh, 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 this is, he didn't like what I said. So I said, stupid decisions, how? And I don't, and that's what I'm saying. Like you said, like we just said this whole time, I ain't, he ain't, he ain't never told me that I made stupid decisions. So now I want to know like, what's going on? So I said, stupid decisions, how? And I don't be lying. I say shit because that's what it is. You don't think before you speak all the time. And I, and you swear you do. What stupid decisions do I be making? Nigga, I mind my fucking business and I stay to myself. That's what I'm saying. You always saying some out of pocket shit. So now I want to know what you think you know. And I never. So, okay. So yeah, that's why. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You was always saying some out of pocket shit. So now I want to know what you think you know. And I never say shit because that's how you are. You think the shit you say is fine, and you be out of pocket. He says, nigga. <laughs> um, yeah, we saw it. We read that. Oh, okay. So now we're back on the real message. I was reading screenshots. Or like, you want to get it? He said, like, you got a tattoo knowing you didn't know how you was going to pay your phone bill of rent. He said, you went to Charlotte with no license and weed in the car and got caught. That's irresponsible. That's how you got caught. The, that's how you caught the charge of, a, I believe. I believe, Shan. That's why I'll be a great lawyer. I believe if some was an objection or or ir irrelevancy. I believe or I believe, Your Honor, Shan. I believe he believes. He don't know for sure, but um, he said like I don't. Well, that's, as for you, that's where some stuff comes into play. Mhm. Mm so, which is we all know. <laughs> I, I would like to hope. I would like to think that his parents taught you that assumptions, if you assume, they make an ass out of yourself. Everybody knows that. Not to assume, even outside of your parents. You done been in enough relationships. Now, I'm pretty sure you done assumed some shit, and it fucked up the relationship, or fucked up the vibe, fucked up the night, whatever. We're going to get back to this. He said, you want to show I got arrested, yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't say shit because he said, I don't say shit because you my guy. But the decisions you make don't be the smartest and I just let you rock because I know if I would have brought it up it would have been an issue Paul Paul let me say this as a disclaimer to anybody that claims they are a friend of someone or that's your favorite cousin or that's your favorite boy or whatever if anybody says they 
they got your back and they want the best for you, you should be comfortable checking them on their shit at any time. And so my thing is, if you felt like you didn't want to bring up something that you felt like should have been said because I'm your boy or anything, why are you bringing it up now? Thank you. You you can't double back. So my thing is, it's either you're going to say it when it's relevant, because if you bring it up later and you didn't say it when it was relevant, it's going to sound like some hating ass shit. Exactly. And so even if you're not hating and you're doing it out of what? Criticism for you to be better or quote unquote accountable. Spite. It is it, not worth it now because it comes off as being a hater because you held on to it. And so a lot of times I tell people if you feel a way or you feel like something needs to be said at the moment, whether you got to pull somebody you respect to the side if you're out in front of people and respectably have a discussion at, at that moment about a matter that matters at this moment instead of holding on later it comes off a lot authentic and genuine than you holding on to it smiling peeking, chilling and then bringing it up later because something else is the matter and I feel like everything snowballed because something was really the issue, but because the issue wasn't really addressed honestly, it snowballed into all of this bullshit. And which made the shit worse because every time he was saying something in that text, in your position, you just like, dog. What the fuck? So you've been like <laughs> yes. checked the whole time, and it should—that it, should not be the thing. Everything that was addressed, if there was ever an issue or a question, or you had an assumption about what something really was, as my boy, as my friend, you should have brought it up at that time. You bringing it up later just looks—it looks crazy. It sounds crazy, and that's what it sounds like. And what they call crazy people? Stupid. What did I say? You sound stupid. Look, I ain't said nothing wrong yet. So, he said, there ain't nothing wrong if you want to do something nice. But make sure you handle your responsibilities first, my nigga. So, I said, right now, I'm I'm livid. I'm mad. How could somebody that says he's my boy say some off-the-wall shit like this? And it's off-the-wall because he didn't say it to me then and there. Like, I know the nigga, my, my longest friend. I done known him for 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 uh, 27 years. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, he tell me when I'm wrong. If he don't, he don't. But if he don't, he don't hold it in forever. <laughs> I mean, he don't, I mean, he holds it in forever. He, he doesn't, he doesn't bring it up at the wrong time. Um, my, my, my second friend that I've known for the longest. My, my nigga Nigel, known him for 17 years. That's my, that's, he's the little bro of the pack. Um, he keep it real with me. Mm-hmm. I, I tell, I say all the time, Nigel stopped talking to me because I was, I was drinking too much at one point. After my mom died, I was just drinking and it fucked up mm-hmm. our relationship. I was not acting like a friend and mm-hmm. he, he got ghost on me and I hit him. I, I had to take myself accountability. First I asked was, I stopped drinking. It was just like, bro, why we don't talk no more? And he told me, it was just like, I did accountability, accountability. But I went back, I said, I keep my fucking phone on, nigga. Like, for instance, man, for instance, you know, I wake up in the morning and it's hustle, hustle, hustle. Uh, edibles. How, how, I wake up every morning and I wonder, how can one of my gifts and talents bring me a dollar today? Haircut, yeah. whether it's haircut, whether it's clothes, um, whether it's it's goddamn um, edibles whether it's shit don't let me if we being real drug dealing I don't do it no more but mm. but I, I don't I, when we talking about weed you know what I'm saying I don't do that shit no more but hey it, it's this shit this nigga don't know about he wake up in the morning he go to a 9 to 5 that's it like you you. but we gonna get there I said I keep my fucking phone oh that's what I'm saying my phone bill is due on the third, 
I ain't, I don't have steady income until tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> until tomorrow. Um, so before then, my phone, my phone bill would be due on the third. I might, and, and then on top of, I don't get, I get paid every two weeks for my, uh, my other job, but I only work on the weekends. Um, right. I get, I get that on the fifth. So it's no more. It's always like that. It's no more than my shit on for for a couple of days. But you know how these phone bills are. I got T-Mobile. Your shit. They cut my shit. What did I say? Then I text you a couple of weeks ago and it was like saying they cut my shit off for like a dollar and some change or some shit like that. Yes. So so yes, they cut your phone off for the the smallest amount. They literally cut my phone off for like a dollar and some change. So I said I keep my phone fucking on Nick. now I'm mad I say nigga a lot when I'm mad I keep my so excuse it. I keep my fucking phone on nigga and if it's not on no longer than a day if it's not on it's no longer than a day or two you sound fucking stupid my rent always fucking paid I pay my shit early you sound fucking stupid and think you know every fucking thing I got a tattoo because I fucking deserve to treat myself for fucking once I did not go to Charlotte and get arrested. You sound fucking stupid. I was driving to Bayboro. I was in my own hometown when I got arrested. And if you, if I tell you the story, I that you believe I got set up because um, the folks at FedEx saw what I. It was the one day. It was the first day. She was like, "What are you packing?" Because I couldn't get it in in the mail at the time. Because when I come in, nobody's ever in the front. They come out the side, and I normally got it packed up and ready to get to them. She's like, "What do you? What do you?" I said, "Baked goods." It's like, damn, forgot my wallet. I had went like thirty minutes away already. Came back because I forgot my wallet. When I left, cops was behind me. I feel like I got set up because it's like, why is this nigga selling baked goods? FedEx gets there quick. <laughs> Yeah, I got set up, but that's the that's the price you pay when you got an edible business in a non legal state or you deal with weed. It's okay, it's okay. I got arrested. I, I bailed myself out. I binded myself out. Now, mm-hmm. as to Roy, cause to Roy, my nigga, I'm like, hey, bro, <laughs> I got arrested. Bail eight hundred. Got four hundred. I said, Teroy, let me borrow 400. I don't have access to my money. The cops took my phone. Mm-hmm. He made me give him the rundown. Why do you need 400? Respected it. He really talked to me like I was his fucking child. Respected it. <laughs> um, he didn't make me, he didn't talk to me like I was his child. He made me give him the rundown like I was his child. But I respected it. 400 is a lot of, a lot of money. He gave me the 400, told him I'd have him, uh, back in 48 hours. Had that shit to him in 24. And, Boom, was good. Credit, like I said, credit always good. Um, what I say, what I say. But anybody that that deals with drugs knows it's, it's even not even that. It's it's just common sense that you're more liable to get in trouble in your hometown than you are doing an eight-hour drive and you're driving the speed limit and and minding your fucking business where. Uh, other than being in your hometown where you got checkpoints and just random state troopers and sheriffs just riding around and I live in a white town. It's Not even that, just random quotas, bad time of the month. Thank like, you. Thank you. So <laughs> So but and that's bothering me because it's now like now it's like why are you speaking on my life? Like you don't know nothing about this life. You can't handle a fucking blunt. You then you know why he don't buy edibles from me? Cause they too fucking strong for him. I they probably got that message. Is, he's like, bro, I just can't handle your your edibles. He actually told me because I used to make jokes. He buy edibles. I, it bothers me when people buy clothing from other people and buy edibles for other people. And you know I make edibles. You know I sell clothes. And you and all you said was you looking for a black home, whatever. Like, hey, I'm here. Put money in my pocket versus going to somebody you don't know. He told me to stop asking them. Just like damn, bro, you you buy edibles everywhere else, so I, I stopped asking him. But my shit's too strong. He don't know shit about about weed. Oh, sorry, Why are you speaking on my life? Why are you speaking on my life? Some shit you don't know about. So bad, there you go. bad timing. Bad timing. I say you don't know. I say you don't need to say shit because you don't know shit, bro. Everything you said is invalid because it is so far, Sam. Everything, yeah. every fucking thing. And uh, now I'm trying to <laughs> move it with the mouse. I said, um, 
I was like, and you goddamn right, it's a fucking issue. Because you speaking on shit you don't know shit about. That's the golden rule. You go through a fraternity. You go. Your, your parents should have taught you. Your grandma, anybody. Keep your mouth closed if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The whole story. Don't speak on shit you don't know. So, yeah. I say you don't live my fucking life and never will. And to think you can judge me and speak on it is disrespectful and out of pocket as fuck. Everything you said is wrong or invalid in some way. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. This why you can't tell a mother. And this is me getting a little sentimental. This why you can't tell a motherfucker shit. Because they go and tell your fucking business and get it wrong on top of that. And that's what I that's what I texted him. He said, is your phone bill? He's still going, Shan. He said, is your phone bill caught up? Yes or no? Who are you? Did you not get arrested for having weed in your car? It's not. He said it's not about wherever you pay your phone. He's not what. It's not about whether you pay your phone bill. It's just if you caught up on your phone bill. If I got caught up, if I got hold up, what? He said he was holding me accountable. He said if I can't hold you accountable, he can't type. He said if I can't hold you accountable, why the fuck are we friends? He said you can treat yourself. But make sure your bills are caught up. So this is what bothered me because accountable, that's not accountability. That's that's spite. He didn't like what I said. And he he said some shit. He said that out of spite. That's not mm -hmm. a, it's not accountability. It would have been accountability if you would have said this shit like Shan said earlier. It would have been accountability if you said this shit when the shit was happening. Mm -hmm. And these text messages was not the appropriate time. So Yeah, that's I said, yes, motherfucker, my shit caught up. So I said, so what the fuck if I got caught with weed and question mark? I dealt with fucking drugs. You ain't preaching. You wasn't preaching that shit when you was buying or promoting my shit. That shit's hypocritical. So shut the fuck up. This is a life you ain't built for. So mind yours. And when I say that, I ain't just talking drugs. This nigga got a, a two-parent, he grew up in a two-parent household. He's still living in the two-parent household. Like, shut up. Shut up. You you have both your parents. You have both your parents. You you don't live the life. I've been on my own since 21. I've been on my own for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. 21. Your mom ain't never your mom ain't never kicked you out because you was 21 years old. <laughs> and if she did, you had somewhere else to go. You ain't never slept in the back of your job. You don't know what it's like to fucking charge some motherfucking underage niggas for some beer and you just the middleman some shit because you can't fucking feed yourself. And nigga, I'm 21 at the time. Not, e not even that. You could just say... Is we gonna speak on accountability? I've been accountable for myself. Keep talking. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, it's a lot to have the responsibility of self and take that on without anybody being able to catch you if you trip, right? And I'm not knocking anybody's foundation or lack of foundation, but I will say I purposely. As the youngest of five kids uh, and a girl, I purposely waited the latest to get my license because in my mind, it signifies, Chantal, you are now responsible for you. It's not, oh, your brother didn't stop at the red light, this happened, or you're late for work because somebody didn't get up on time and take you you're late for work because you're late for work a lot of being independent is accountability you know what i'm saying having the house i have is accountability making sure shit runs straight is accountability so for me i'm not gonna tell no man or woman what time it is and what they should be paying and when they should be paying it. And I'm definitely not going to be in nobody's text messages asking, well, did you pay your card note? Did you pay your card note in full? Is your card note paid? Like, something else 
is the problem why you're pressing me. And so when I initially talked to you about this whole shit, and I've talked to both of y'all, you know, and I've listened to both of y'all tell me your side. Does he? Never mind. You've answered that question without. I ain't even gotta ask you. The issue is he's not seeing it from your point of view, and you're not going to see it from his point of view because the way he brought it to you was disrespectful. And it's no, hard. I see his. I can see it. I can see his no, point of view. I can see what he's trying to say, but because it's not adding up, because it's not fact. Yeah. Based upon what you really dealing with, he sees it as facts. And, and how can you what, how can you speak facts when it's not your life? But that's the thing. He if you don't if you don't have that what did I say that foundation Please of respect. Hurt, and, I don't live like you. We is, are not. And this is me teaching him that respect. It, shit is off balance. And the whole conversation is off balance because he was snowballing a whole bunch of irrelevant shit from one thought to the next thought to the next thought. And you sitting on the other side, like, where the fuck is all of this shit coming from? And so my thing is, like, when you're having a discussion like that, nothing productive or 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 if you're looking for some type of understanding is going to happen it is ego all over this shit is it, it e- is, is it ego is it ego issue on my on my end i don't feel like it's ego on your end i feel like it's pride it's like i'm gonna stand up for my shit because i know what's really actual factual which anybody would do in that um, position because the way you're coming at me with these thoughts is crazy right now, nigga, because we cool. And so that's why I say as a creative to a creative to a creative, I understand you, nigga. <laughs> and I understand, I see where the issue is, but if you have to say what the fuck is on the tip of your tongue when you respect somebody. There's a way you say it and there's a time frame you say it. And when you miss that time frame and you say that shit later, it comes off very bitchy. So And I'm not saying bitchy like that's what someone is. I'm saying the way this is coming off right now is not conducive to what the fuck I was talking to you about. And so I really I really want to get hostile and I understand that because I'm the type of person when you're not about to talk to me any type of way because I'm a fold you mm. yes right yes and that's and that's out of like nigga we could be related or not related I'm gonna treat you like a stranger in the street after you disrespect me you the stranger in the street and people don't understand that until they in the position where nigga you crossed the line so now I gotta treat you like this and this is my thing once you cross the line with somebody and you don't know how to talk to somebody and when right now is not a good time for a certain particular uh, conversation you you ain't got no say so on the results of what the fuck you just did Yeah. and so that's where it is right now and so that's why I said, you know, like, I respect both of y'all, so you but up. if you feel so strongly on your thoughts on how this went, and you feel like you was in the right, you're going to have to deal with the conclusion on this. Oh. And if you feel your stance on, you know, defending yourself, because anybody would defend themselves in that position because that was off the wall in timing... And and certain certain shit should not be discussed. Like you said, nobody should be talking about who bitch is the baddest. Like you seven year olds on the. And I've been taking accountability <laughs> the whole time. That's the crazy part. He said I'm not accountable. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get let's finish these messages. Cause we had a we had an hour nine and nine. Let's spend hold on. I said stop counting my fucking pockets. Cause I damn sure ain't counting yours. 
He talk about his money all the time. He buy new equipment all the time. I don't say shit about that. I said, this ain't fucking accountability, nigga. This is spite. Like I said, if you don't know all the facts, it's best you shut the fuck up. General common sense. You got the, these negative hidden thoughts and shit about Let's say you got these negative hidden thoughts and shit about me. Judgmental as fuck. Hypocritical statements. You tell me why we friends, nigga. He said, counting your pockets, no. You're caught up. I'm glad you caught up. That's uh that's good. I want better for you. I don't count your pockets. The fact I let you slide when you be owing me money says how much I fuck with you. Those fighting words right there. Hold on. And I, I said, he said, and as far as the weed thing, I told you to keep it in your trunk. I remember the, I remember it vividly. You can cancel the weed out. You still was driving with it. A, a light without license or, insur or insurance, but I'm, I'm not judgmental. I'm holding you accountable. One, um, why are you bringing up this money? He's talking about the two hundred dollars that I talked about in the beginning of the show. Why? Why are you bringing this up when you told me not? Hey, get it back to me when you can. Just get it back to me when you can. Like, why would and, and you let me slide? What did you let me slide from, nigga? What did you let me slide from? What, what, am, I, what am I sliding from, y'all? What? what? Like the conversation, I was like one, one, and I'm two with Roy's. Literally, I'm two with him. Respectfully, what, what, what? Because now that's a that's that's a that's an underlying threat. That's okay, a, so, so that's an underlying. I don't know how you grew up, but that's <laughs> a that's an underlying threat where I come from. You look, you let you, you lucky I let you slide, nigga. Because knowing like the person that said that, that it's it's gonna. So in those words, Tori would have been hurting me. Like, yeah. nah, nah, nigga, nah. I feel like that whole text was unnecessary the way it was put, Chris, and it was very that? passive aggressive to me. If somebody sent that to me, it's passive aggressive. Like, it's kind of like when somebody disrespects you, they be like, "Oh, I'm gonna pray for you, bitch. Don't pray for me because our God might not be the same." You know what I'm saying? And that's what energy that was given off and that's why i'm just like there was a lot of time where i feel like you pumped the brakes on the conversation and you was giving him space to pump the brakes on the conversation and he wasn't and that again is a lesson you learn when you're around different personalities and how to talk to people you gotta know when to stop there was a lot of times in that text that I read where he just kept going and going and going and going and I asked him I said so question did you feel like a lot of what he did after you gave him the money to help him he shouldn't have did he was like no cause realistically I'm the type of person where my focus would be paying back my friend before I did anything for myself. So I said, so is the majority of... But I asked you, how did you want it? Did you want the payments? We're not even on that. We're not even on that because that's another thing. So the majority of why you're upset about a lot that happens, the money part. And he was like, no, not really. That's not my focus. But it is, though, if you're bringing it up in the back end. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, like, don't give someone something and hold them hostage because of what you gave them by what they do in their time frame next. Especially when you ask, do, how do you want this back? And you tell somebody, no, just give it to me when you have it. You got to let go at that point. And I felt like he didn't let go. And I felt like he was trying to dictate your actions of what you need to do based on what he would have did. You not him and he not you. Y'all two different people. And when you respect somebody enough to be like, he always got me when he said he got me or earlier. I don't have to worry about him. I respect him as a man. I'm a back the fuck up. You would have backed the fuck up. 
So, so I feel like a lot of this into the underlying reason was, nigga, I gave you something you didn't have that you said that you needed. Now I'm holding you accountable and I'm watching your every move type shit. And watch you don't do that. Watch my, like I said, watching my pockets. So I said, ain't no slide to me, nigga. Hold on, let me run the beat back. Let me run the beat back. <laughs> I said, ain't no, sli- I said, ain't no slide to me, nigga. Stop saying that shit. You ain't let me slide. You told me to pay you back when I got it, and I fucking am. That's the end of that story. You ain't letting me slide from doing nothing, bro. I'm a fuck withable. He said, that's why I still fuck with you. I said, I'm a fuck withable, nigga. I ain't, I ain't done shit. Ain't nobody got a reason to not fuck with me. I hate when people say that. That's why. Oh, you lucky I fuck with you. No, nigga, you fuck with me because you like me. You, you, like, you like my personality. You like my character. That's why you fuck with me. Like, you should never tell somebody. I hate when people don't think before they speak and you speaking off of emotion. That shit childish. We too grown to be speaking off of emotions. And if we being real, that's some real woman shit. Some real bitch shit. And that shit goes for anybody that speak off of emotions. Like, we, you don't... I this is... This is... Because you I always regret it. You always gonna regret speaking off of emotion. Yeah, but you you don't tell nobody that like you doing them a favor being around me or exchanging your energy with me. If you ever question you fucking with me, please do not. You know what I'm saying? You should never have to bring that up with somebody who respect. And that's why I say the foundation is respect. A lot of what was text was out of disrespect. I and agree. I'm just like why? Why? So I said, when you're in my shoes, then you can speak on my life. I said what I said, bruh. You count in my pockets and speaking on shit you don't know about. Again, this ain't fucking accountability. It's spite. Don't speak on shit you don't know about. We live two different lives. We live two fucking different lives. He said, you got this. He finally pumped the brakes. He said, you got it, Larry. I'm not about to. After going back and forth with me, he said, I'm not about to go back and forth with you. You got it. So I said, but now I'm full gas. I'm a guy. And, and somebody, some this, this is a thousand people out there might say, oh, that's the Leo and Larry. I'm a fucking Leo. This is where I say that bullshit, that Zodiac bullshit. I'm a fucking Leo. I'm a goddamn lion, and nah, you don't, you don't poke the, you don't poke the lion. I live in New Bern, home of the bears. You don't poke the bear, and I said, yeah, bro, this my fucking life. I don't speak on yours, even all the fucking relationships you done been through. I keep my fucking mouth closed because it ain't my life, and I fucking, I'm fucking wise enough to know I don't know this nigga's whole fucking story. But again, you think you know every fucking detail about what the fuck I got going on? Also, just dismiss the fact everything in your initial statement was wrong or invalid, but you got to be right and prove some point instead of owning up. Hold on. Instead of owning up, then you tried to call it accountability when it was said out of spite. That's not the thinking. That's that not thinking before you speak shit I be talking about. So that was October 22nd. I didn't talk to Toroy again till October 31st because he didn't hit me up. I said, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't give a damn. And I'm like, I ain't got a problem with you. I just had to let you know you fucking out of pocket. And and it's going to get brought up again. You know what I'm saying? This is not the end of it. It's going to get brought up again. Um... So I asked him about this pod. He dropped the old pod. Why he dropping old pods? I don't know. He dropped some old pod on Baby Daddy Chronicles asking what y'all doing? What's, what do y'all do when y'all stressed out? But I'm sitting here. Why the fuck you asking goddamn parents what they do when they stressed out? You ain't got no fucking kids. Now, that's me right now telling you. Matter of fact, that's not accountability. I'm saying that out of spot. <laughs> but it would it would have been holding him accountable. Prime example, it would have been holding him account- uh, accountable when I asked him on October 31st. This pod dropped today. Oh, he said, yeah, early September. I should have told him there. This this was a bad podcast to drop on this crowd. 
You should have dropped it on the on on your your main your other one. But um, going down, going down, going down. He said. This was a, a whole conversation with y'all. You said what? This was after the conversation with y'all. Yes, uh, this okay. was a week later. This was a week later. So. Hmm. So then he said some weird shit. He was, he said, I can't play it while we on the phone. He just said some weird shit. Do you remember? Did you listen to that video about um? He can. He was just like, yeah, I talked to some other people, and they said that my girlfriend looked better than yours. That's some weirdo shit. It's, it's, it's not even weirdo shit. It's Why wild. You, it's what? Childish. It's like what what nine year olds do on the super offices. Like why are you, you in know? competition with me? And if we being real, if we being real, Sam, because I always keep it real. Because I know I'm gonna be a six figure nigga one day <laughs> soon. I'm gonna be a six figure nigga one day real soon. That's the name of the podcast, <laughs> Six Figure Nigga. <laughs> and we talking about this nigga the whole time. But um Six figure nigga, one day real soon, and I'm high. I don't know where I was getting at with that. Where was I getting at with that? Huh? This nigga you got talk, talking about the girlfriend tech. Quick, sorry, you turned up. Just why are you, why are you talking about who girlfriend? That that's that's weird. That's weird. That's weird. And I just felt like one, you were lying. I felt like that he just pulled that out his ass because he just don't want to shut the fuck up. And it's just like, bro, just have accountability and just, bro, if you wrong, you wrong. I forgot what I was saying. Let me get back to his message. So, something happened. Um, I don't know. He said something, but my response was, I don't know why, because you don't think before. I was like, because you don't think before you speak. He said he said in the message, yeah, we just going to have to dis agree to disagree. Um, or No, he said something like that. He was like, yeah, we... Ain't gonna. I've come to the conclusion we ain't gonna never come to an agreement that we just gonna about to think it before you speak. And I was like, I don't know why, because you don't think before you speak. But I digress. Again, this is not letting you just say your shit and then move on. I I, I responded. I said, but I digress. I said you was holding on, but then he was gone. He was talking about a girl. And this again, I was being real with him. I said, yo, you was holding on to hope. That's where you fucked up. Holding on to potential, what could be a big, I said, what could be. Holding on to potential, uh, potentially what could be. I was like, that's a big no-no. Keeping it real with him. Always keep it real with him. So, um, now he just, it's just messages. But he just said some, that's, and that's all the messages. They just feel like he said some out-of-pocket shit. And to be my friend, that wasn't some friend shit. Like we done said it a thousand times. Like it was the wrong time, and he said he said it out of for accountability, but it wasn't accountability when he should have said it when it came to his mind. One, it's, on top of <laughs> it's like yo, I've said on the podcast, saying yo, the, the nothing comes, nothing great comes when you uh, when you're comfortable. When you become comfortable, nothing great right. comes. Um, I got comfortable. I said on the podcast again. How can I not be accountable? I take accountability for everything I do. I got arrested because I got comfortable. I was feeling good. I had six hundred in my pocket. I had about five grand in the bank. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I'm I'm two hundred up before I even brush my teeth in the morning. I'm feeling. Good. I'm about to buy this car that I'm driving. I'm feeling good. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I get fucked up. I have my bag in the in the uh. In the in the in the front seat instead of in the trunk, what I normally do, but I got what I got comfortable and I got fucked up. That shit happens, but it's some shit that you never you never experience. You don't know what it's like to, to get booked, to get arrested, to be in a fucking like holding cell with a nigga with a with a swastika on the side of his fucking face and on his sandals, like not knowing if I'm gonna have to fight this nigga because I'm just black. He clearly don't like m black motherfuckers, but you know what I'm saying? Like you don't shut your mouth, so, shut your fucking mouth. You, you, and that's why you can't, you can't Quick, say, you oh, you know, you be messing up as if 
you're in a position where you never mess up. We all mess up. And where I might mess up with you looking at my life and be like, well, I wouldn't have done that if I were you. That's where you fucked up. That's your opinion. Where Karoy might say, oh, well, look at John Paul's life. That's where she fucked up. Um, that's his opinion. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter what anybody else's opinion is about where I may have fucked up in their eyes. I made my decisions on what I did based upon what I felt was good for me at the time. And when it comes to accountability, accountability is personal. It's not, oh, I see you from the outside. I'm going to point and tell you where you need to be accountable. It's not that. That's something I got to wake up and deal with when nobody's around. And so I feel like maybe the word he wanted to keep using maybe should have been something different but a lot of what he was saying was based upon what he thought was but was not fact that he felt like me criticizing you from the outside of me holding you accountable and and it was just bad timing and it came off like you've been holding all of this in and not really being honest with me and Ugh, I don't like shit like that. Like, say what you want to say. Say what you. I told him it was fake. I told him it was fake and phony. Those are the words I had. That shit is fake. That's what happens when you have bad times. I had a friend when I was on the treadmill tonight before we started recording. She hit me up and she was like, "This is the new website. Tell me what you think. Look at it on the computer, not just on your phone." And I told her I'm on the treadmill. I will. But me just looking at it through the iPhone, I'm just like, I like the flow of it. I like the fact that you can see the overall idea of your brand. But I feel like a plain white background you need color. You need something that's more you on the website. And she said, I agree. That is the time and space for me to give her that opinion. You know why? Because she asked for my fucking opinion. And... She's asking me about the website now. If I had texted her and I was like, I think it looks great. And really didn't tell her my thoughts about the shit and gave a fuck. Later on, you think I can tell her, you know what? I think that website was whack. I think you could have this and this and this. What, how would I come off? Like a fucking hater. Period. And if I'm not a hater, and those are my initial thoughts, Right now, today, is the time for me to share that shit with her. Please, Not five up. months from now. And that is the example of a motherfucker having bad timing, whether you're a friend, a co-worker, a parent, a sister, a brother, or a romantic partner. Bitch, this is not the time, but I love you, though. So, I, um, I told him that... If he ain't got an apology, if he don't have an apology, he don't got nothing else to say to me. Because I feel like he was in the wrong. He was in the wrong. He, he, he was wrong. It was not friendly. It was not of some something somebody of a friend would have said. Man, I know this because I ain't got no fucking siblings and I know what it means to be a true friend. I've my, my closest friend is 27 years, the other one is 17. They keep it real with me. They tell me when I'm wrong. Like, yes. They tell me when they disagree. Yes. So I know that you were out of pocket. And unless you have an apology, there's nothing else to be said. And I thought about not even paying your ass back. But then I ran that by a couple of other people. You know what I'm saying? You, I don't know. I have, a, I, I, I have what I call a count. It was you. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. So I, so you're a part of what I call like my council. You know what I'm saying? As I run things, you know, just I, just to make sure accountability. I, I I I hold myself accountable to make sure that I'm not in the wrong. So I ask other people. So um, I was like, nah. Somebody was just like, nah, because what's I don't know. Well, somebody said because I think it was you saying that. Yes, it was because. Uh, <laughs> Um, you don't want nobody to hold anything else over your head. He'd be like, yeah, Shan ain't do this, Shan ain't do that. 
So I said, you know what? But you know how petty I am. I should send two hundred dollars worth of quarters. Two hundred, and I do it. That's how petty I am. I should send two hundred dollars worth of quarters to his front door and let him cash that. You can cash that, Jack. I just um, what I was, what I was not gonna say. I um, I just feel like it, it was just it was foul like, and dirty. It was, I, I like it was dirt all over, the, oh, all over this, and I'm just he was just stabbing me with the knife. I'm like, oh, oh, like it's, saying it's, why? If anybody took away the names in that text and just read it word for word, coming from Troy's side, they would have felt disrespected as fuck. And the energy you on your that. side would have been valid. And and that's all I'm saying is. If you could take away the names and the faces in the position and say, what is this call for? Honestly, then fuck it, feel how you feel. But if you can't, and all you can do is rephrase what was done and what you think and this is what happened and nobody can see for real like what was said and how it was said and how it snowballed out of nowhere you know there's something that needs to be done on your end oh, and I, should, I think oh, I should send him a dollar a day for the next 200 days <laughs> too much energy my thing is like if you feel good about what you text and you just like dog if it's not an apology please refrain that's your stance and I can't do nothing but respect it and if his stance is I feel like I did nothing wrong you know if he don't want to talk to me no more fuck it that's his stance too but what's so crazy about life is when you don't learn your lessons with people who know you the best and you run across someone that doesn't know you that well, you don't know them that well, the results gonna be worse than what this is. And that's why it's so important for people to learn lessons about how to talk to people, how to communicate, how to carry yourself, um, how to know what time you need to be somewhere and not tell somebody what time they need to show up and how to know what time and when you need to speak the fuck up and when to not speak. You need to go to learn that by sight, by hearing, or by feeling. And when I say feeling, I hope that shit is not your face. So my mom, she uh, taught me how to speak to people. Um, I used to, the only reason I speak up now and I step on toes and don't give a fuck uh, what I say now because I always think about before I say it you know I step on toes but I always thought about what I said before I said it For the, it does not take me long because um, yeah. you're just evaluating the situation um, she said Mac I used to shut down when I was a kid a teenager I used to shut down I got upset I would not say nothing just I would get quiet went from talking to just getting quiet she said Mac you can express yourself, but I also had a bad temper, I had a quick temper, bad yeah. attitude. Just yeah, I was. <sighs> I got a, I got a nephew like that. <laughs> so she's like, Matt, you can express yourself. Just do. I'm your mother. Just do it politely, because I'm I'm mm-hmm. still your mother, and um, that's why I learned. Like, all right, calm down. Then I got a friend named Pam as I got older. She said, you can insult somebody in the most intellect, intellectual way. Just tell somebody that you're a piece of shit. I don't like you. I never want to see your face again. I wouldn't mind seeing you walk out in the street and, and getting hit by a car. She could re, she could re-say that in the most smartest way that you went, oh, thank you. Thank you. So, and my mother worked for uh, the bank for 18 years. She was, and everywhere she went, she was the... The uh, well, she I think that one bank for like 10, 13, whatever. Um, only black lady with her own office. You walk in there, she was the only black lady with her own office. Shout out to my mama for teaching me how to talk to white folk, which also taught me how to speak to people in general. Yeah. And as I learned, 
it's just not it's just not hard. You say you're an entrepreneur. Well, I damn say I'm an entrepreneur with multiple businesses. So I learned how to talk to everybody. Take mm-hmm. photos. So I got to talk to the white folk, black folk, Spanish folk. I talk to the stoners. I know how to talk their language. I talk to to the people who like nice clothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's like yo, it shouldn't be that hard to learn how to okay. adjust to your settings. To to code switch with your friends so you don't say no off the wall shit and you know that's that it's not even you shouldn't even have to code switch you just have the respect and the, and but if you think you don't if you don't think you're wrong I can't do shit about mm-hmm. that I will say I'm wise enough to know that so yeah. I mean so yeah if you ain't you ain't got shit to say, if you ain't got a goddamn apology I don't want, I don't want to hear from you that's just how I feel. So this is how I feel. I don't want no, no, um, no fake apology. I don't, don't want to. Yeah. Nah, I want that shit to be genuine. I want that shit to be genuine. And, and I'll say this because I'm queen of it. Um, uh, when I come to like a situation like this, agreeing to disagree with people, I only agree to disagree with people who I don't care to grow with. You only okay? disagree with people you don't care to grow with. I agree to disagree with people that I don't care to grow with. Mm, I only when, disagree. I only agree to no, disagree. I only agree to disagree with people I don't care to grow with. That's the, that has to be the name of the show. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you why. Because To take a stand to find to take a stand to find no resolve for something means like if the other person is at their at their wit's end and doesn't want shit to do with me because they don't they lack understanding, I'm okay with not seeing you ever again in life and not dealing with you. I'm I'm cack on you. It's cool. That's a you know bar. That's a gem. That's a gem. Um, but if you are interested in growing with someone, whether that's friendship, business, or romantic, you take the time out to learn how to care for them, nurture them, build with them, and teach them how to be in your space. And if you're in my circle, you're going to be connected to a six figure nigga. So you, you, you better act right. You better act right. It's a privilege to fuck with me. It's a privilege to fuck with Mac. Shit. And I'm only tripping. I ain't tripping off because it's him. I'm tripping off of the principle. It's just the principle. I feel like the whole principle of the issue. How you talking about? You talked about another man insecurities. Why? Talked about my insecurities. He talked about me getting a tattoo. He talked about me going to see a girl. Like, bro. Oh, That's no, why I was like, the conversation. Ain't no is bitches no, in my town. It's no bar. For no reason. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? That was, that was my whole focus. But, you know. And you know what? People, I never forget when I was younger. My best friend of 27 years. <laughs> At one point, he always had a car. Always had a car. I didn't get a car till I was like my first car till I was like twenty three. Um, I rode in the uh, I rode in the because uh, I used to rap. I don't know if you know. I used to rap in one of our tracks, one of my solo tracks. I said something. I was like, now nah, I'm in the back seat, jealous of my best friend. Like, I didn't say it then. But it's so, I don't know where I'm getting at. I just feel like, you just, why is, why are you hating on me? Because what, I can't, what I say earlier, I, what, what does it mean or you? My life is worse than his, and he can't move around like me. But my life not that, like, I went to Charlotte because the Airbnb was paid for. The car I drive is eco-friendly, so it takes $40, $50 Forty dollars, fifty dollars to fill it up. Mm-hmm. I charge a hundred dollars a pan, so that's really two in there. If I mm-hmm. set a hundred dollars aside, 
Shoot, who knows if I got a, you know what I'm saying? It's not your business if you, if I got a food stamp or car, a card or not. You know what I'm saying? When I get to Charlotte, my favorite spot is the halal spot that only charge six dollars for the chicken and lamb combo. Like you don't know what I got lined up and how I'm how I'm moving. And that's the point. My thing is like I take care of what I need in Larry life. You take care of what Savoy needs in Savoy's life with what you got going on. Out of respect. Unless you ask me to or you need help with something, don't invite yourself into how I take care of Larry. Unless I say, hey, what is your advice on doing this in my life? And out of respect, people, out of lessons and experience, you know when to say certain shit and when it applies. And how I run my life. People not gonna run their life like that because people have other needs that I don't give a fuck about, like being outside and mingling with other people. And I have to live my life like up until tomorrow. I no yeah. longer have to worry about selling. I could retire the edible business. I'm not I'm about to stack my bread and let this barber and fund everything big time now. But I don't have to worry about hustling no more. Now I just gotta I- worry about hustling up these these haircuts and I'm good. Like like, he don't know is, nothing about that. But my point is, your his headspace shouldn't be so far into your world, and um, you know. And if it is, at least be right. <laughs> that's fine if it is. <laughs> if it is, that's fine because you was you was somebody I called my brother. If it is, that's fine. But just make sure the information you feel like you want to spew out, whether you hold me accountable or out of spite, I need that information to be correct. And you need it at the time that it's needed. And I need it at the time that it's needed, yes. So, Like, if I I needed $10 today, don't be like, next month I got you. Bitch, I need $10 today. Yeah. That's how that works. So, I just thought it was kind of fucked up. Just fucked up. Like, damn. Like, another one bites the dust. And so, uh, yeah, that which leads to, I don't mind, cut, like, burning bridges. I don't mind. I don't, I don't want to hold no, I don't like tension in, in friendships. Honestly, matter of fact, Shane, I ran into a, a old friend that I knew in Charlotte. I met in that five years I, I lived in Charlotte. And we ended on bad terms. You know why? Because he didn't know how to fucking talk to people. So I'm picking up a frequency. It's music playing in the back. I don't know where it's from. But he didn't know how to talk to people. And he called me in front of people just talking to me crazy. Cussing and everything. And I said, you know what, bro? Don't ever fucking call me again, bro. You ain't doing She was trying to get me to do... uh photos for like the YMCA and I'm like I don't have to do photos for these motherfuckers if like if I gotta be connected to you this shit is not that important to me I like working with single models in the studio natural light shit like that I ain't worried about shooting little kids so um so I hung up never talked to him again ran into him I had a photo gig right now I'm, I'm sitting there getting my shots I'm looking at the camera and he was like hey man don't I know you and I looked up and it's him. Dapped him up, gave him a hug, told him, was like, you know, I got the clothing line now. He was like, how the podcast? Like, podcast going good. I'm still dropping. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Going three years heavy now. I'm like, I'm naming like, hey, bro, because he was always a get money nigga. So, and, and it was like, hey, bro, and he was there and he seen me some bad times in Charlotte. My life has always been up and down. My life has always been up and down, but I, but my bills was always paid. I had the same apartment for five years. Can you say that to Roy? Respectfully, respectfully. Like I'm just at the, I'm just in the, in the rough, rough right spot right now. But like I said, I'm about to be a six figure nigga. But um, yeah. So I ran into the friend, and come on now. So I ran into the friend. And I got his number. He called me the next day. And I think I was in the gym or I was with a friend or something like that. 
And I ain't pick up And I've been thinking Like call him back And I'm like But we ended up He's he's one of those niggas Who like to say he's the alpha male And, and it's just like You can't tell him nothing that's wrong when when I when I said that he don't know how to speak to niggas, he swear that if I spoke to you this way, you deserved it. I think if that was his motto. Like if I spoke to you like that, you deserved it clearly. And it's like I ain't got time for a nigga like that. So I'm like, I forgot what the main point was, but like cutting out. I think you said go back to what you said in the beginning. Cutting out things mm-hmm. that you don't need. I'm like mm-hmm. he might give me a photo shoot here and there. He might come to me. Um, Cause he still lives in Charlotte, but I was, he was like his parents stayed down here, so he was like, "Yo, um, I might he might get a couple haircuts from me." But I'm like, people, when you're grown, most people don't change. The person, yeah. the mo- the person I am today, as level headed and open minded as I am, I'm only gonna get more level headed and more open minded by the time I'm forty, fifty, sixty. So right. the way he is is just like. It was good seeing you, but then again, it was like, damn, I hate I hate being rude to people too, Shane. So I haven't gotten to that maturity yet. What <laughs> maturity? What, what you mean? Um, saying it was nice seeing you if I don't really give a fuck to see you. I mean, I just sat there and talked to him for like five minutes, and I dabbed yeah, him so- up. But I said that in my head, like, you know what? I didn't pick up your call. It was good seeing you. I said that in my head, like, I don't have to continue talking to you. Like, because if I ain't calling back, he might not never call me again. I say out loud. You said what? So what you said in your head, I would say out loud. And so a lot of people, because they like, oh, she not going to hold back. Let me just walk around. I like that. See, people will say I don't have. A, there's some people that say I don't have a filter, but I feel like I do, and you, I feel like I want to be to where you're at. Like you, you also don't mind. You like stepping. I like stepping on one or two toes. You'll step on the whole foot. I step on your whole foot and look you in the eye while I do it. See, I just step on your your big toe like, with my heel this, and look at your eye. At this moment, right now. My my favorite brother's wife. No, I don't like her because I said to her, I don't like you. I tolerate you. And so now, when I walk into his <laughs> business, they, now when I walk into their business that they share, she knows not to talk to me. And I like that because we have an Damn. understanding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my crazy. brother, my brother, there's no more conversation after I leave with him calling me saying, "What happened? Well, why did she feel like?" Bitch, you know what the feelings is. Bitch, yeah. you ain't got it. And that's what I like. I'm not no. I had a conversation with you. I told you straight up, I don't like you. If you was on fire, I wouldn't spit. Yeah. Stop. Stop saying hello to me. <laughs> that's me. So, <laughs> Shane, I think this was a. Uh... A good podcast. I did not want to spend the whole podcast reading the message, but in the as you know, this is a podcast where you get a laugh and a lesson. So even yeah. though you, you got I got your laugh in between while I was reading the receipts, you was given a lesson, and I appreciate you for that because with me alone, it probably would have been a a three hour podcast. But um, yeah, so. All in all, he's mad. He's he's wrong timing. He's mad because the money. And I'm doing things to just live a fucking life. He gets to go out. He has friends in his city. Shannon, I don't have no, I I, I have little to no friends in the city. All of, and the friends that I do have, I know he's probably, (laughs) he's going to listen to this, but most of my friends have kids or married and have kids. So it's just like, I'll it's, it's me. So uh, you got you got all your friends. You get to do what you want. You got money in your pocket to go out. I don't get to treat myself. I get an extra a little bit of money. I'm like, you know what? Let me hit my designer. You know, this is the first thing I bought myself in a minute, and I still ain't got no no new shoes to match it. You know what I mean? Colorways I got, and I ain't got shoes to to match my shit. That's, that's I never treat myself. 
And you see, this ain't a this ain't a podcast mic. I've had this mic for for over a decade, and it just sounds better than a podcast mic. And it's just like I don't treat myself. I need podcast mics. You saw me nigga rig my uh my my uh the <laughs> yes the, the machine we on now. I was having issues with it, but I fixed that shit. I fixed it. I had to I had to go inside my machine. This nigga don't know nothing about survival. Let me let me say this. I res I respect both y'all. As creators, right? Mm -hmm. But the lesson in this is if it ain't to life, don't speak on it. And if you got something to speak on, know when to speak on it. But out of respect and out of growth and out of business, learn how to talk to people and understand what is being said and how it's coming across to someone else because if you don't you can kill something you need uh, kill your options and block a lot of blessings um, we gotta learn where to put our ego we gotta learn where to put our pride and we have to learn how to shut up even if we feel like we're right know when it's not beneficial to the situation at hand and if you really need to spit it you need to be responsible and have a conversation and his growth and his lessons and I can't live Larry life and I can't live Tori's life I can only live my life and I did the best with what I knew at the time of what the fuck I did and today I'm smarter than I was last year. And I'm smarter than the year before that. And out of respect, we have to learn how to respect people in that life. But your head will get bust if you do not learn how to speak to people and when to speak. And your time will get wasted if you don't speak up for yourself. And we are too grown to be sitting on no phone or having a conversation discussing another person's finances, relationships, or oh, lovers so that they pick in comparison. And if you don't sit and compare yourself to another individual just out the blue, it is always another underlined reason for it. Because I'm that nigga. I'm that nigga. Renella and Larry. <laughs> Made that nigga. My daddy was a player, so that nigga went and made a Mac. I cannot. So that's it. That's the moral. You said it. You said it. You said it. That's it, y'all. This is, like I said, this is this is a a little journey uh, in my journal as I go through the journey. So I hope the best decisions get made out of. This. I made my decision. You, you, unless you're talking to him, you you hope that you, you hope that you hope that he wise up and he say and he and he apologize, drop that pride, drop the ego, and apologize because he was wrong. I'm a real nigga, and and I'm somebody that everybody everybody need a Larry, everybody need a Larry in their circle. I do 100 percent agree on that. Both of y'all made a decision on this, and as a creator. That was introduced. I'm protecting my peace, man. I always protect my peace, and I keep all my pieces with me. Don't mm. be fooled. I am a mother. Okay? And, and and then I don't want to go through a friendship with you, having that shit on my heart. Like, hey, that nigga, that nigga thinks some well about me, and I don't like it. But we still Kiki and Kakan. Like, nah, yeah. nah. I'm cool. I'm cool on that. I'm too grown for that. I'm too grown for that. Everybody gotta be comfortable and be at peace in their mind at all times um, with people. And you know, these people, you know, leaves change, you know, plants sometimes come back, some plants die. It's all life. Yeah, um, we'll see. Only, only the universe knows. <laughs> oh man. So, Sam, where can Again, where plug yourself in. You have you have a lot of things. Plug whatever you would like to plug in. Yeah, 
find me, CandyPotted.com, CandyPotted on TikTok, CandyPotted on Twitter, CandyPotted on IG, and all the pods are on there, all the shops are on there. If you want to support, you can support me through Red Circle, or you can get yourself some fine merch from Teespring. Any of the four stores is your world, is your pockets. I ain't counting them, but I do appreciate it. And uh, thank you for, you know, tuning in to this couch session, okay? Um, it's not just, you know, let's go through this, let's pick this out. It's, it's lessons, it's gems. It takes something away with this. Share a clip with somebody that needs to hear it because you couldn't put it into words. And it was put into the right words today. I feel like I'm giving a sermon, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Appreciate you. And that's, I want to say, that is Shan with the C. Shan. C H A N. Because first, she didn't correct me. Oh, she, she, she didn't correct me. You didn't correct me, but you said it in a voice message. You said your name. I was like, Chan. And you said your name. And I was like, oh shit, I said her name wrong. So it's Shan with a C. But, um. Yeah, C H A N. Yeah. But, um. That's what the that's what the couch session for, you know. It's a therapeutic time for us to come together and speak our hearts and minds freely, without judgment. A platform for aspiring entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to come up and, and do what they do. The only podcast playing nothing but the low the dopest local music around. It's the best podcast for the culture. All right, y'all, y'all know who it is. Big smooth, smooth black, suave nigga. Hefe Hilton King Black. The heartbroken people healing himself and let's not forget. Manifestation guy. Yo, this is Larry Hilton. And this is the Couch Session. Peace. This is a Couch Session Network production.